Hello, everybody. Welcome to Hall of Fame 13. Are we excited? Hello, everyone here in the Fortress and streaming online. We appreciate you being here, and we have a really exciting presentation today. So today, we are going to have the honor of hearing from Stephanie Bao, who comes to us from Italy, who is one of the fastest uh, motorsports women in the world. Pretty amazing. And today, Steffi's going to talk about not letting go of the handlebars when life throws you those curveballs. And those handlebars are your dreams, your goals, your ambitions, all those things, the things that we have here at Full Sail. So without further ado, very excited to introduce myself. My name is Caitlin Della Santos, a course director for Creative Presentation. But more exciting, we have Steffi Bao coming up to present. So let's give her a hand. Thank you, Caitlin. Thank you, everybody. It's a, a pleasure to be here. I'm uh, super happy to be invited by Full Sail and Sari from the eSport uh, department. So let me tell you a little bit about me. But first, because I know that the title is a little bit intriguing, some of you probably don't even know what an endobody is. No, I think you do. Come on, everybody, at least on a bicycle. You must have been on a bicycle. So. But I have a question for you to start. Who is a gamer around here? Any kind of gamer? Fantastic. I see all the hands up here in the, in the audience. Also, for the people online, you can raise your hands on the chat. That's super cool. So yes, so I'm not a gamer. <laughs> this sounds maybe funny, but I'm not a gamer. But I am part of the eSport community and eSport industry. So let me tell you how I got there. So, it's all about passion, you know, like for me, everything since I was a little girl has been about passion. Um, I, I, you probably hear that I have an accent, like Caitlin was saying, I'm from Italy. So I was born in Italy and when I was very little, um, I looked at my mom and dad in the eyes and I say, one day I will become the best motorcycle racer in the world. Okay, not everybody has like their mind and ideas so clear at that age, but I did. And I continue to push because that was my passion. So one other thing I want to share with everybody is that it's incredibly important to identify that. So when you feel something in your life and you're like, oh my God, I want to wake up every morning to be able to do that over and over again, that is called passion. So follow it. And I believe that you guys that are here at full sale, you probably know a thing or two about passion. So good job on that. Another thing that is incredibly important, you know, like for as a takeaway is uh, to have uh, a community around you. You need to have fans, you need to have uh, family, you have to have a community because there is no I in team. You know, like you have to have a group of people that can support you on what you do. So for me, my sport, I was incredibly lucky to have my family. My mom and dad, you know, ended up being with, uh, supporting me. You know, since I was very little, you know, there was no difference for anybody. They, she's, they said, go ahead, follow your dream, follow your passion. So I've been incredibly lucky to be able to do that. So I had a very good career in motorcycling in, uh, in Italy. Um, I was able to compete against, against the men. I was able to win a lot of titles, you know, like in, in, uh, with the women. And then, you know, like life and everything, you all gonna experience this if you haven't already, there are roadblocks. So my biggest roadblock at the beginning of my career was that I was so successful I got to the point that I wanted to continue to do what I, I wanted to do, and then I did this qualification. So you needed to be able to qualify to represent your country to go into the World Championship Series, okay? So I go to do this qualification, you know, people that play eSports probably understand, you know, about doing qualifies. So I qualify in the top um, five in my country in Italy. The top five automatically, if you were qualified there, you were getting a ticket, let's call it like that, to go to the World Championship. A couple of days later, I, fi I, fi I finished third in this top five, you know, like of many. So I'm like, yes, I'm in, you know, this is good. A few days later, the Federation calls me and say, we change our mind, you're not gonna go because you are a woman. Yes, so big roadblock <laughs> right there. But what I want you to, to take from this is that it doesn't matter. 
Okay, so of course I was super mad, <laughs> you know, like furious about it. But I'm like, you know, like if you put a mountain in front of me, I'm gonna figure it out a way. Either I'm gonna go on top of it, around it, make a hole through it, you know, go underneath, whatever it takes to be able to continue to achieve your dream. So for me, that was unlocked the opportunity to go to the United States of America. So that's, here I am, that's why I'm here. So I ended up uh, leaving Italy with uh, a luggage, you know, not speaking any English whatsoever, got to the country with passion, you know, so I really wanted to do this for my life. And uh, little by little, you know, I start racing, I start competing here in the US. I got, I got good at it, so I was able to get the professional license to compete with the men here in the United States of America. So I'm like, yes, you know, like, this is great. I can continue to do it and, and, and go and, uh, and achieve my dream. So I was lucky enough to um, bring home uh, three world titles for the, the women class, being uh, the first woman to race in uh, Supercross and Motocross here in the United States of America. But they think it was super cool, and what this taught me is that now I was becoming a person that can inspire others. So keep this in mind. Anything you do in life, you can be inspiration to others. So this has to be super clear because it's so important to be able to give back. Then I had a second roadblock, <laughs> you know, in my career. The second roadblock ended up being a, a, a part where um, I had a big injury, you know, and that happened during, during a year that was 2000, 2005. It became a bittersweet year for me because I was able to come full circle before that roadblock. I was able to become full circle and uh, uh, go back to Italy, you know, and compete with the men in the world championship over there. That was fantastic, but it was also like, Dang it, I needed to leave my country, you know, to prove myself somewhere else that I'm worthy to be able to do this. But then finally, you know, like I got the invitation to go back and guess what? It wasn't cheap for them this time around. <laughs> so also another point important, like know your worth, you know, do not back down, know your worth, because it is extremely important to continue to be authentic in who you are. So that year, I was saying that was bittersweet, right? So that was the, the second roadblock that I just um, ended up saying a few minutes ago. During that year, I had a career-ending accident, okay? So I cased a double jump, you know, in motocross, dirt bike racing, a double jumps are like two jumps, one here and one here, and you have to do it in one transaction, right? I, in, in, in the term of the sport, is like came up short. What does it mean? It's like they are landed, you know, on the second jump. It wasn't pretty. <laughs> it wasn't pretty. But again, because I have the passion, you can kind of think, uh, uh, guess, uh, and maybe somebody from the audience can put that, that question in the chat also online. Guess what was going through my mind when I was for this two seconds in the air, you know, to land, you know, on that jump, which I knew that it was gonna be not pretty. Any guesses, anybody? No? <laughs> well, the first guess was, dang it, I'm not gonna race next weekend. <laughs> that was the first guess. And the second guess was like, hmm, this is gonna hurt this time around. But again, this is to show that even like, I, in, in the middle of a split of a second when I knew potentially my life was gonna change, I was still holding on to that end bar, right? So I crashed, I uh, destroyed both of my ankles. It was bad. Like a doctor immediately, you know, again, I was on the, on the uh, ambulance, I go immediately in emergency surgery. They tell me, the surgeons say, hey, you know, like, this is gonna be bad, I'm gonna try to do everything to save your legs. And uh, still, on that uh, bed, going into emergency surgery, I'm like, yes, okay, but where can I go back and race again, <laughs> you know? So they never, never give up, never let go of the end bar. Luckily, they saved my legs, you know, like if the few of you that saw me walking, I do have a limp, yeah, that's what I'm left, left with, but it's, it's like my, my, my word, you know, like I will never give that up. Even though I had to add that uh, injury in my life, you know, like I stay 
and um, continue to figure it out, you know, what it can be next. One thing I need to say to you, though, it wasn't easy. Oh, no, it was not easy. I went into a bad space, which I'm not ashamed to say, you know, like it's actually important to recognize that. Um, it was difficult because the life that I knew, you know, up to that point, like that, and I didn't want to believe it even when I was jumping and I knew it was going to happen. But I was like, uh, you know, like, uh, now it's not possible. You know, when can I recover and go back? And then instead, you know, I needed to come to terms that my life changed. So it's not easy, you know, and uh, I was in, like I said, in a dark spot. But again, I fall back to that community. I fall back to my family and the people that were around me. And with their help, you know, like not being ashamed that I was in a bad space. So with their help, I was able to come back up. So I started looking at life in a different way, still with the concept of not letting go of the end of our. So um, we have a video that is going to come up just to give you a little bit of a visual of what that means. So up here on the top, we have this, uh, the guy in the middle, I don't know if you can catch him. He ended up uh, losing... Yeah, this one too. Both of these guys, you know, they are on the brisk of crashing, you know, and changing, you know, they race. Both of them ended up winning the race at the end of the day. So it's, it's, it's important, you know, to let it go. In those kind of situations, eventually you let go <laughs> because you cannot save that one. But the important thing is like you go down 10 times, you get up 11 times. So always fail forward. You know, you're going to have those things in life. It's, nobody is not going to have it. You know, you will have it. So just fail forward. Learn from it. You know, get up, do it again, and continue with your passion and do with your love. So after uh, that, I can say that uh, for me, the important part was to figure it out how I could turn that negative aspect that happened to me where my life changed into positive. And that again, with uh, the help of family, the community and people around you, you know, like that's how you can come back out of situation and they, you immediately you think like, oh my God, how I'm gonna, I'm gonna solve this, how I'm gonna go forward for this. Failing forward, you know, having the community helps a ton. So, yeah, so at that point in my life, I was 28. So I felt like that I was lucky enough, enough that I had a very important career. And now I was able to make a completely new important career, 28 years old. So I felt lucky. You know, at one point, the mentality changed, and I'm like, hey, I can do something. For that, you know, I became the general manager of the World Championship for Women. So for me, at that point, it was kind of like, okay, now I'm the mama of everybody. So I could help all the girls to try to achieve, you know, what I was able to achieve. And again, you know, the mentality changed. I was able to now um, see, you know, what I can do and contribute to the world in a different way. Before, it was a lot of uh, me and my team and my success. Now it was more like, okay, I had this career uh, uh, ending injury, but I can help others to achieve what I was able to achieve. This is an, another very important thing to keep in mind, you know, in whatever you do in life, because trust me, helping others, it comes back tenfold. So why all of this and why eSport? Now I'm getting to it. <laughs> okay, so what happened was that uh, um, I had uh, um, an idea when I was in Italy in 2020. So it was 2020, I got to, to Italy visiting my family, you know, just before the pandemic started. And uh, I, I saw my little niece that she was spending two to three hours a day watching people play video games. So I'm like, hmm, maybe there is something here that I can do to continue to help others to get involved with my passion, which is motorsport. So I w walked through that, I, I came up, I studied, I know exactly, you know, I start to learn a lot on what um, um, the industry was doing, you know, like, and again, I kind of fall back into what I have the passion for, which is motorcycling. So 
learn a ton. And then I said, okay, I'm going to make a company. I'm going to just start the company, you know, and figure it out how to make all of this happen. So um, I called the company Init Esports. So that's you know, like how we started. And uh, with that, I ended up doing two verticals. So one vertical is the motorcycle side. So we have um, people uh, and, and guys and girls that compete only online for now for that, you know, by in the motorcycle world. So for me, it was very rewarding. And then uh, um, I had a lot of fun, you know, like uh, to be able to give uh, that possibility to people to play online. And then I also did uh, the second uh, vertical, there is sim racing. So sim racing is all about car racing, probably some of you know about this. But I'm going to um, step back a second because I have a surprise here I want to show with everybody. Because when I told you that i not been involved in video game and eSports, there was a little lie there. So I'm going to show something here. I'm Peppy. So happy to meet you. So <laughs> I've been in two video games. Not one, two video games when I used to race. and. Uh, I think it was, that was pretty cool, <laughs> but that was uh, the extent about gaming that I knew, you know, up to that point. So yeah, so back about Inity Sport, you know, and what we do there. So are the two verticals, you know, so the motorcycle part and the and the in, re in real life um, and sim racing. Sim racing, what we do specifically is mostly to encourage um, women, minority, non-binary people to participate in a very safe environment. Again, for me, it's because I come from a male-dominated industry. I was able to, you know, <laughs> break that glass ceiling at a time or two. So I'm like, hmm, I need to continue to figure out ways to bring more people, you know, and be part of what I love so much. So we have created a few events, one that just ended, you know, not too long ago, uh, like in March, we did it in March 4th, which was called Screen to Speed. So Screen to Speed is uh, from the screen to in real life. We're going to show a little clip of how that looked like, and then I'll tell you a little bit more in depth of what we did there. Let's go, girls. So maybe you guess what that means, from screen to speed. Anybody? <laughs> In the chat? <laughs> right, go ahead. Exactly. The goal for me, and I think that is very important, is to do this for women. You know, so we screen to speed it was the first event in the history of eSport, only women related and non-binary people, you know, to participate. They compete online, so it was a hybrid mo uh, model, online first, so, so they did all of the qualifiers. And then the top 15, we invite them to Las Vegas during the Las Vegas Pennzoil NASCAR race. So what's happened, what was happening was like, we had this, the room with the simulator inside the track while the NASCAR race was happening around them. So it was like a, a symbiotic relationship between the in real life, so the, the world that you can experience and the digital world. And it was super cool. The winner got to walk, the winner of the sim racing event got to walk on the NASCAR podium, which again, you know, it's bringing, you know, the in real life with the sport digitally together. It was having 80,000 people there cheering on her, you know, that she wants a sim racing event. But the cool thing is like, as you were saying, screen to speed, is that she is going to come back to Las Vegas to the same track that she won the competition digitally. She's going to test in a real Porsche race car. So the goal here is to create a pathway, 
You know, like for me, it's incredibly important to get more women and minorities involved in the sport. Racing, more sport, it's expensive. You know, I don't know if you know about this or you even try to get into the sport, but it's expensive, you know. So either you are incredibly talented, and I was lucky one for that, or, you know, like you have to have quite a bit of money to be able to be part of the, uh, this, uh, this uh, um, category of sport. So when I was in Italy at 20, in 2020, that I saw what was, what was happening with my knees, that's when I got the idea, like, hey, maybe there is ways that we can make this cheaper and open it up to more, much more people. So there is a lot, already a tons of competition for boys, you know, but for girls, they weren't. So then I came in and I'm like, I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna make a difference in, 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 in the world. So after that, you know, we started to think, okay, what else can we bring in to be able to continue to grow this? So to be able to continue to make a bigger pathway. Because in life, that's important too. So you maybe start with one idea, and then the idea continues to develop. You know, like nowadays, even if you make a business plan from a company, it's a live document. You're going to continue to change it because there is so many things happening in life Then you need to be able to adapt, you know, and learn from it, you know, and say, hey, maybe we can go this direction or that direction. So for me, at this point, we were able to do a show that now is very successful. We're going to have different edition. It's going to be a Formula One edition. There is going to be an IndyCar edition and a rally edition, you know, all for women and minorities and, and non-binary people to be able to entertain the, the sport. But okay, so this is like going after um, people that are already in the esport world. But what if we can if we can make this bigger, you know? And the idea can start to come because we have data that shows that in motorsport, like in engineering, in, uh, in, in STEM, basically, mathematics, there is not many people, you know. There is not many people in general in these fields, you know, like not many, uh, sorry, not many women, you know, in this field, not just people in general. There are plenty of men that do this, but like, uh, um, women. So maybe we need to go that direction because, again, motorsport, it's a combination of all of these things. You know, you have to, even as a driver, you need to know what's going on with the car or the motorcycle to be able to go to your mechanic and say, hey, this is not working. We need to change this, right? So it is a combination on a lot of different skills to be able to get involved in this sport. So we decided that maybe STEM were going to be a good idea to get involved with to be able to do more um, and, and broaden that uh, pathway. So again, in motorsport, engine, with female engineering or, or female mechanics, they are very little. You know, like I believe there is like less than 10% of the people in the industry that work in these uh, roles that they are women. So. I mean, again, like, ah, I need to do something about this. I wanted to get involved and figure it out. So now we started with SIM for STEM. So SIM for STEM is going to become, the first edition is gonna happen in a month of time in May in Indianapolis for the Indy 500. So what we're gonna do with that, we're gonna get uh, women from uh, high school level women, so a little bit earlier than, than you guys, but like uh, get their, their attention and get them free of charge to do hands-on STEM activities surrounded again by the Indy 500. And then when they learn these STEM activities, which is uh, data logging, which is uh, uh, we're gonna teach them how to build a steering wheel to then to attach it to iRacing and play. You know, we're gonna teach them coding on how to make a, 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 a small track, you know, like so they can pretty much create their own game and create their own steering wheel and participate. Um, we're gonna make team, um, uh, team building activities, like we call it a pit stop challenge, where people need to, girls are gonna have to learn how to change tires, you know, on a go-kart incredibly fast, just like it happens when you do a pit stop, right? And once they learn all of this, we're going to put them into the simulators, okay? So by putting them into the simulator, now, you know, one of the activities is going to be uh, the racing line. So they're going to learn the racing line on paper, you know, and figure it out which one is the best um, place to be in the apex of a corner to be able to 
complete the lap the fastest you can, right? And then we put them on the sim and they have to try to do it right there. So again, it's to continue to create a community, you know, a pathway of like-minded people with a support all around it. And then, you know, the next step to that is that the, the, the girls, we're gonna have 200 girls, you know, like, and the next step is for them to be able to, to get to the Indy 500 and meet female engineering, female mechanic, female drivers, you know, broadcaster, producer, you know, because motorsport has a little bit of everything that you actually guys are, and girls are studying here too. So it's kind of like, if you can see her, you can be her. So we're gonna cre continue to create that pathway. And then how we link both of them together is because the success of screen to speed to be able to then go in the real car. The hope is like that these new people that we are getting involved in esport, you know, through STEM activities and then simulator, they're gonna be excited enough to be able to qualify or go into the qualification for screen to speed. And then eventually having the chance to go into um, becoming a race car driver if they want to, but actually also opening all the doors you know, into this industry. Again, show them, hey, engineering is possible. You know, we need to change that number from 10%, to let's go to 15, to 20, and then finally to 50 at least, <laughs> you know? So, yes, if, I think it's incredibly important to show the way, you know, and get, uh, get people involved. So we have a, a small video that show what uh, my partner um, in this part of the program is called uh, Sim for STEM. She has done it already in Ireland. So she already uh, got 1,500 girls in Ireland to be able to participate in the program and then uh, learn. And the, the good data here is that they were able, or this girl, like, a third of these 1,500 girls from high school, they ended up entertaining a career in STEM. So they went into college for, uh, for that. And uh, uh, five of these girls, still small, but five of these girls got a go-karting license. So the model works, you know, like it's just about bringing it all together. And for me, it's all about really doing it for women, by women, you know, and being inspirational. So this is a little video that we can play in regards to what we did for SIM for STEM. So I hope you have fun watching that. But uh, yeah, you know, like another important lesson for this that I wanted to share with you guys is that uh, my friend Nikki that does this, Nikki that does this program in Ireland, immediately because we had the same passion, we came together. You know, and it's in life, it's all about building and not dividing. So together, you know, we said, hey, we can, we can become partner and continue to um, bring the, the show um, abroad. You know, from Ireland now, we're going to be doing it in the United States. And so far, you know, people are already coming back and in the industry say, hey, you know, we want to bring this worldwide. So we'll see. You're going to have to tune in and figure it out. Uh, later on, I'm going to show you our Twitch channel and how you can follow on social and be part of the, of the change if you want to. But as I was saying, you know, like uh, this is the pathway, you know, like this is what we wanted to create. So the school, go after the schools with the school and get them to be part of SIM for STEM. And working on the bottom because I do believe that create a critical mass is important. 
And a lot of time, you know, I was one of them. I was one of the only women out there to compete in the male-dominated industry. And it's hard, it's very difficult. So how we change that, I am convinced that if there is more girls, more of that critical mass, then we will be able to have more talent to come out of there. So eventually, even the girls at the top, like I, I used to be, we can get paid like the guys do get paid, <laughs> because at that point, you know, everything would be fairly equal. You know, like more people at the bottom, more, you know, we can create that pathway. And maybe one day we will see that woman getting into Formula One. And I hope that you guys maybe have watched Rise to Survive. If you haven't, go watch it because it's very cool and very entertaining. But again, too much testosterone. We need to bring <laughs> a little bit more women in there too. So. Yeah, I guess this is pretty much my presentation for today. Um, I have uh, the takeaways, you know, of course, I hope you, you had uh, fun listening to me. I hope you got inspired a little bit about what I said. And uh, yeah, just follow your passion. Uh, know your why, why you want to do that, because that is where it comes from here. And when you know that from here, there's nothing that can stop you, nothing. You know, you're going to find a way. Surround yourself with a community that can support you and just never give up. One last thing, always ask. There are people out there that will give you answer. Don't be shy. You know, go out and ask. No question is a wrong question. So go and ask. So with this, you know, I guess we are done with the, the presentation. I want to thank you from the audience, and I want to thank everybody online that watched this. We're going to open up the stage for a Q&A. So if somebody has any question, can you know bring it up, and uh, we can talk about it. have a question about uh, the model. So I know that Red Bull F1 actually did that. They had a simulation driver who did really well. They let him, <clears throat> they let him race in one of the races. Mm -hmm. And I was, so I, like you said, I know this is because like I come from eSports. I'm on the Valorant varsity team and I'm Congrats. trying to open up to try to get those minorities, the non-binary, the women just to join. I'm also in computer science and it's super male dominated and kind of gate kept. So I was wondering, are you trying to do this in high schools and colleges or just like what's the starting platform, yes. I guess? I mean, for me, the, what I figured out that works is because it's led by women, mm -hmm. okay? So like, or, or if you are part of a minority, you need to be the voice out yeah. there because nobody can relate to you as somebody that is like you, right? So that's the key. Even in the, what you said that uh, Red Bull and there was a guy, this guy, okay. James Baldwin, you know, like in the UK, he started playing, he never set his butt on a car, before, on, on a competitive car. He did it all through gaming and it got so good that when they choose him to be in a car, he won the, the first race he did. So I'm setting out to find that woman, <laughs> you know, and it's working because there is the authenticity. So my suggestion to you is like, uh, be the voice. You know, like be out there and be the voice. I don't play, you know, Valorant or those kind of games because again, I stay with my passion, <laughs> you know, like, but maybe in your game, find the passion, find the common ground, you know, and um, be open, invite people, come in, save community. And uh, at the end, we are all here. We are human beings, we want to just have fun. Thank you, I appreciate it. Yeah, you're welcome. Anybody else? Don't be shy, remember. <laughs> We've got a couple questions from online. Okay. So I'll ask one and then if anybody wants to jump up here, we'll do that. <laughs> uh, so the first question is, um, over the past years, few years, have you noticed an increase in women being sponsored, uh, noticed an increase in the esports world even with women being sponsored? Yes, but again, it's not enough. <laughs> you know, it can be better. We can continue to work hard. And this is why program like Screen to Speed brings the reality out. So we were, I was very lucky to have uh, the support of Penzoil and Ford and Yahoo for that. But it did work, I'll tell you why because there were women running their program. So as a woman, 
talking to them, of course, it's like, yeah, it's a no-brainer. We want all to help, you know, and do that. So again, seek out, you know, companies that they have like-minded people, you know, that they can make decision and go there. And then little by little, we're going to start to change the ratio and continue to grow. Thank you. You're welcome. Anybody else? <laughs> So you mentioned that when you went back to Italy that it cost them. And you said that the big thing is that you have to know your worth. So did you have a talent manager, or how did you be able to assess what your value and worth really was when you went back to that table? Yeah, so for me, I think I'm a little bit of a strange case <laughs> because I believe in myself so much that I didn't need to have a talent manager. I just knew, you know, like, and results speak for themselves. So, you know, it doesn't matter what gender I am. It doesn't matter if I'm a woman and you are a, a guy. If I'm producing the same results, what's the difference? Right, there is none. And I was incredibly uh, lucky because I had my parents that taught me at a very young age. So I, growing, you know, through sport, but also through business, I always sat around table all only men, but I never felt intimidating. I never felt, hey, you know, I don't belong here because I do know that I belong there. For people that they don't know that, they need to work on their confidence, <laughs> right? Talk to yourself, you know, pump yourself up in the mirror, you know, like, you you can do this, and then you're still not sure, surround yourself with people that are going to tell you that you can. So that's my suggestion, you know, like, but then again, in gaming and whatnot, you know, like, you might want to have a talent, but that's the part that you want to have around, uh, so, sorry, talent manager, to help you to believe in yourself. So just find the right people, surround yourself with the right people, and think are going to get better and continue to grow. Thank you for that. I do have one more question. Yes. <laughs> so um, as far as what you're doing, there's also the emergence of Formula E. Mm -hmm. um, and so how does what you're doing also translate to Formula E? Is it just the same thing or, you know, what are some different things there? Yes. So a couple of things here we can uh, touch base on. One, Formula E is actually doing already the eSport part of the program. So they're already working it. So it's one of the category of racing that they are far ahead compared to everybody else. In my opinion, is also because Formula E is electric. Right. Therefore, a lot of young guys and girls like your, your, you guys in the audience, you understand the importance to go electric. So by that, you know, like it feeds into the same crowd that they are going to make differences for the future. So sustainability, you know, like I try to be able to live in the world that is a little bit less dominated by gasoline or stuff. They actually are bad for the herd. Right. So that's one thing. But the other part is like. There is it's not for women. There is no women in there. So the, the part that we were going to do and we are going to do with screen to speed is opening that up. So we're going to do screen to speed Formula E edition. Like I said, the screen to speed, you know, uh, Formula One edition. We're already talking with the Formula One Academy. So, you know, continue to bring in something that girls can be inspired by and inspired to be with a critical mass of community of women there to support them. All right, thank you. You're welcome. All right, some more questions from online. Uh, this one is, have you ever thought of adding a VR element to the simulation model? Yes, so we have a few of our players that play um, um, in our community that they prefer VR. Um, it's a, it's a tricky way, you know, I feel like it's more closer to the people that are starting to get and understand the metaverse a little bit more. So, it, you know, gaming as a whole, it is a stepping stone into the metaverse that it's here and it's going to continue to grow, you know. But uh, VR per se, it's, it's right now, I think they still need to, to develop a little bit more because unfortunately a lot of people still get seasick, you know, like when they use a VR when they play. And that is just about 
about technology, right? But it's definitely another way to continue the Im immersive method to continue to create the bridges between in real life and the digital world. So we have players that love that. Again, I'm not really a player. I just look at the games, you know, like to try to see and create a business relationship to make sure that we can work, you know, together. But uh, I listen to everybody and I'm happy that people play with the VR. I think it's going to continue to grow. Amazing. Yeah, you're welcome. Another question is about your logo. So could you tell us a little bit about that and how you get, came up with this logo for your company? Uh, the, the logo is just like the logo. I, I don't know, like I kind of like it started with the name. And uh, the name in it, it was actually an idea of my wife. <laughs> you know, she said, hey, you know, like uh, we were going to try to create a new company in 2020. And I like short word. And, uh, and she said, what about in it? You know, and I'm like, great. So be in it. So in fact, you know, like uh, I wanted to ask everybody at the end if you are in it, you want to be part of the change. But in regard to the look per se, you know, like we just came up with something that kind of like uh, remind or be part of something, be into it, being inclusive. And I feel like that we kind of nailed it. <laughs> I, yeah, I think so. <laughs> awesome. Uh, so the last question that I have right now from online is, um, you, you kind of talked about this a little bit, but when you were faced with discrimination or people looking past you, how did you handle that confrontation in person? How did you put them in their place? <laughs> right. uh, okay, so it takes a lot of practice. <laughs> you know, again, it takes a lot of like confidence in yourself and have around you people that you know believe in you and that they can be there for you. And then there is this switch in your mind. You know, like, so all of a sudden you just started to see what really is important, which what's important is not what other people think of you, but what you think of yourself, right? So when you grasp that, you know, in your mind, then everything else is like white noise. So people are gonna troll, people are gonna say b bad things. It's not your problem, it's theirs, <laughs> right? So just get that switch in your head and just continue to be you, be the authentic self and, and, you know, never let go of that end of bar. Be in it. Yes, be in it. Thank you. I have uh, another question now, mainly uh, kind of about the business model in a sense. Um, you guys were talking about screen to speed and you guys did the NASCAR thing. And then we brought up the Formula E. What about Formula Drift or Rally or any of those things? Are they going to be added to the in it? brand sooner or later? Yes, they okay. are all coming. Okay. Again, we are a startup, so yeah, yeah, yeah. because we nailed it, and I'm very mm -hmm. happy that we nailed it, now we are having all of these requests. So we're gonna make it happen for everybody and for every different type of category, and hopefully, you know, it's a model that can be adapt to other esports eventually. For racing, it's easy because it's relatable. Right, it is really completely transferable. You know, like you start on, online and you can become, you know, like a very good driver in real life. Um, we'll see what happens. <laughs> you know, like we are uh, definitely a big ambition, you know, like, and uh, like, like as I said earlier, I took a luggage and I went across the country. I didn't even speak uh, the language. So let's do it. <laughs> and then another question. Um, Kind of regarding the getting the minority in the system. So, like, when you have something that's male dominated, and let's say there's a, a singular female on the team, but she just has male teammates, and there's other females that may want to join but are too timid or too afraid because they don't want to be confronted by these aggressive men, mm -hmm. what's the situation? Well, I would it? say join the INI Discord <laughs> because in there we are all about inclusivity and everybody's there to help out. And the goal is also like from this, uh, the program seen for STEM is to direct everybody there. So the program is not just is done that day and then ends there, right? Cre you guys know about a community, right? So like by bringing everybody to the same place, then you can continue to grow it and continue to have people that they are at the same level, right? And again, if somebody comes in there and they're gonna be inappropriate on trolley or whatever, you know, in Discord is easy, delete, <laughs> you know, you don't belong here. So yeah, so for me, I think the key is that, you know, create 
um, places that are safe place where uh, people can come in and, and feel themselves. We also put uh, some uh, um, uh, check and balance, I think you say. Like in our competition, we use uh, uh, Gamer Safer. That's a software where uh, people get verified. So in that way, we know who you are, right? So if you bring um, um, accountability to something, that you will see that there is people that are going to be thinking it once or twice more before doing something, right? So for us, we not mask is not really the right word, but we, we kind of like a, propose it more like a driver license concept. So, you know, like... A, you want to race, you want to compete, you need to have your uh, init driver license. And, uh, you know, like if you take somebody out of the track or you're inappropriate, what happens in real life? You get points off your license or your license gets taken apart. So it's the same concept. So it's all about creating things that is relatable. You know, like more relatable you can do it for the community you're trying to, to attract, better it is. And then kind of like explaining in terms that it's easy for everybody to understand. Okay, thank you, I appreciate it. Yeah, you're welcome. All right. One more? Okay. Another one from online. Uh, how do you reach out to high school students? Do you, your team, go out there? How do you get them involved and in, in introduced to this? Right. I'm not going to give you all the secret because that's my business. Yes. <laughs> no, but uh, kidding aside, we just go after a principal or a you know, teacher that they are in the STEM education, you know, like that they are a um, mathematician or a you know, science educator. And we just go through the internet, especially in public school, you have them there. So then you say, hey, you know, we have this program, you know, you want to take part of it, you know, it's free for the students, you know, come on in and do it. And we also went to the next step to make sure that we are STEM accredited. So in that way, people that take the classes is actually taking off a little bit of a load of a teacher because they can come to us and they can learn things that they are part of a regular cur curriculum and in a way, you know, mark it off from the teacher. So it's a win-win for everybody. You know, we bring something fun. And I am a true believer that if you connect with kids, you know, at that age where you make them have an experience a day is like potentially life changing, then you get them. You know, you have their attention. And this is what we are trying to put together. Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. All right, I think if um, we are done with the, the question and everything, I thank you all in the audience to come and listen to this little crazy Italian that decided to come over in the United States and do all of this crazy stuff. But uh, feel free to follow in it, to follow me, you know, and uh, remember, don't be shy, ask. And uh, I am uh, always available to help. Of course, you know, like if I'm not running around like a, a chicken with a head cut off to try to make events <laughs> happening. So thank you so much. I really appreciate you. I appreciate Full Sail. This has been an incredible opportunity for me. I hope everybody learned a little bit from it. And um, let's do it. Don't let go of the end of bar. <laughs>